What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the Lost Tangent Outpost. My name is Spada and welcome back to the Multiverses Living Roster. Today, we're talking about Hanna-Barbera franchises. Another episode I've been excited to do. See, Hanna-Barbera has been around for decades and if you were a kid in the 80s and 90s, then you probably have at least some familiarity with a large swath of the shows that came out from the Hanna-Barbera team. But this group of franchises goes beyond even that point in time all the way to the 60s. There are so many cartoons from this team that if we wanted to give them all a fair shot, we'd be having to talk about this five shows at a time for at least a dozen videos. And I really don't want to do that many episodes about Hanna-Barbera, as much as I love most of these shows. Instead, we'll probably end up doing a few episodes on this topic as we go through our Living Roster series. But as a consequence of how we handle polls, we'll have to limit the franchises to just five, as I alluded to a moment ago. Trying to narrow down which five is tough, if for no other reason, but for the sheer amount of applicable shows. There was no shortage of Hanna-Barbera. Barbera cartoons that feature heroes swooping in to save the day. And since these shows go all the way back to the 60s, you can imagine that there are some shows from that period that probably wouldn't be feasible if only for the changes in our culture over the course of the last 50 to 60 years. But even still, there's a huge amount of shows, so I'll let you know, just like I did about Adult Swim last week, that it is fairly plausible that I will not be covering your favorite Hanna-Barbera franchise. If that happens, just let me know in the comments which franchise you wish I'd mentioned, and I'll be sure to make that a priority the next time. So when looking at what's currently in multiverses, we have two for certain representatives from Hanna-Barbera, Tom and Jerry and Shaggy. Then our predictions have actually laid the groundwork for a few more, those being Fred Flintstone, Johnny Bravo, and the Powerpuff Girls. Now, for Johnny Bravo and the Powerpuff Girls, I think it's fair to count these toward the Cartoon Cartoon franchises, just to be as specific as possible, so that leaves us with three representatives so far that we have from the Hanna-Barbera team. It's really hard to choose just five from the list of Hanna-Barbera franchises, so I'm just gonna choose the five that stand out the most to me as really interesting or fun options. All five of these shows are incredibly old, going back as far as the late 60s, so it's hard to pick an order, but last episode when I discussed Adult Swim, there were two franchises that were brought up in the comments. Where's Harvey Birdman? Where's Space Ghost? Well, I held on to both these characters for this episode, not because they're not more well known for their Adult Swim versions, but because to me, Birdman and Space Ghost are part of my earliest superhero viewing experiences. So to me, those shows are Hanna-Barbera franchises first and Adult Swim shows after. So with that, let's start out by talking about Space Ghost. Space Ghost was introduced in the late 60s as a part of a small team. Being from Ghost Planet, Space Ghost teamed up with three sidekicks, two teenagers named Jan and Jace, and a little monkey named Blip. Most episodes since centered around them flying in space, thwarting the plans of a few of their regular villains. The show only aired for a couple years, but Space Ghost was brought back in the 80s for another animated show, and then finally in the 90s he was brought back to be a late night host for his show Space Ghost Coast to Coast, with two of his villains as part of his late night crew, Zorak and Moltar. Coast to Coast was brought back to air on Adult Swim as well later on, but Space Ghost, as a hero, was actually quite capable. He could survive in space naturally, and he had amazing technology as a part of his costume. A button on his belt would allow him to go invisible, and the buttons on his bracelets allowed him to fire beams of heat, cold, magnetism, and more. Added with his ability to fly, Space Ghost makes a fantastic candidate for a game like Multiverses. While he's not afraid to deal with his foes up close, he most often keeps his distance. As such, I'd advocate for adding him as a mage. Now, when I mention old superhero cartoons, the first thing to come to your mind would probably be something like He-Man or Thundercats, maybe even She-Ra. But it may surprise you to know that Space Ghost wasn't the only hero to predate them. There's also Birdman and the Galaxy Trio. Now, you might be wondering about the Galaxy Trio, but since they actually had very little to do with Birdman as it comes to his show and his segments, we'll leave them out of this discussion. Hey, that's not cool. Oh, hey again. How are you going to talk about this show and not include Vapor Man, Meteor Man, and Gravity Girl? They're cool characters too. Well, I'm, of course they are. It's not that I don't think they're cool. I just think that Birdman is kind of more cool. Besides, they don't even show up in his show. That's not true. Look. See? There they are, defending that, uh, Godzilla knockoff thing. Okay, that's true, but that's the only thing they appear in together. What I mean is they don't actually help out on his show. They have their own segments where they fight crime on their own. Well, you can't just ignore them. They've got awesome powers, too. I'd love to see Gravity Girl in multiverses. Okay, that's great. I tell you what, why don't we leave it to the comments? If people in the community want me to cover more on the Galaxy Trio, let them mention it in the comments. Does that sound fair? Fine, but you guys better say something. The Galaxy Trio is so underrated, Meteor Man had this thing where he- Okay, okay, cool. That's enough. Bye. 
Okay, like I was saying, Birdman is the coolest character on the show, or at least that was how I felt about it when I was a kid. Even if every episode was basically the same five minutes of animation reused every episode. With the same central plot, Birdman goes to fight a bad guy, bad guy beats him up, Birdman gets re-energized by the sun, wins the fight against the bad guy. His powers are pretty straightforward, he's got wings so he can fly, He's powered by the sun, which gives him the ability to fire solar beams from his hands, which is his primary weapon for dealing with bad guys in general. Considering that, I feel like it'd make the most sense to make him a mage, but maybe they could build in a mechanic where he has to re-energize somehow, since that's such a central plot point used in the show. Either way, this is the same Birdman that you know from Harvey Birdman, so maybe they could even use some of the concepts from Phoenix Wright in Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 as a reference. So then let's talk about a show that's a little bit more Hanna-Barbera-ish. <laughs> at least in the most recognizable sense. The Jetsons. When I was a kid, the Jetsons, the Flintstones, and Scooby-Doo all had an interesting connection. Even though there's nothing explicitly connecting them other than a few random crossovers between the Jetsons and the Flintstones, I always saw them as sibling shows. Like, The Flintstones is a show about people in the past, The Jetsons is a show about people in the future, and then there's Scooby-Doo, which felt like a show just about people in the present. Now, this is fairly nebulous and doesn't have much to do with anything, but I say all this because I consider these three cartoons to be a cornerstone of Hanna-Barbera programming. As such, since we have Shaggy already confirmed, and Fred Flintstone in our prediction, it does seem only right to get someone from The Jetsons. So, I couldn't do a Hanna-Barbera focused episode and not talk about The Jetsons. It's hard to pick a representative from this show, so I'll just go with the character that the theme song is about, George Jetson. As far as how he could play, to me, you can incorporate some of the gags from the show, like the treadmill at the end of the intro, incorporate Leroy or Astro, maybe even have other people from his household, Jane and Judy. Shoot, maybe you could even include their amazingly capable maid, Rosie the Robot. Let me know in the comments how you see George working out. In either case, because it's kind of hard to nail down his exact play style, I'll call him a support character in this case. Since that is most often George's role in the show anyways. For our fourth option, I wanted to bring up an option that I was surprised to find out was a Hanna-Barbera cartoon, Captain Planet. Look man, every 80s and 90s kid knows this show. As soon as we hear the name, the theme song pops in our head. Most of us can't help but sing it out loud. That iconic, Captain Planet. Now, this show speaks for itself. If you haven't seen it, you absolutely need to. It was a show about five activist teenagers who were constantly out advocating against pollution and for cleaning the planet. So Captain Planet is really just the embodiment of this exact mentality. When the five teenagers unite their powers of their rings, well, by your powers combined, I am Captain Planet. So Captain Planet as a character is obviously super powerful. He's got elemental powers, he can fly, he even appears sometimes to have a bit of telekinesis. So much like the other two superheroes in our poll so far, he'd probably best fit the playstyle of a mage, but I think a good argument could be made for him to be a support as well. Assuming that he gets in the game, bonus points to player first games if they can make an alternate costume for him based on Captain Pollution. Alright, and with one more poll option to go, let's talk about what is likely to be the weirdest suggestion, Super Friends. Hey, that's a DC show! We already have four DC reps! Uh, not again! Listen, I promise, I'm aware, I'm going somewhere with this. But you said... Just chill. So yes, Super Friends is a show about the Justice League, and it is very clearly a DC show. As such, I almost left this show off the list, but the Super Friends have one very unique aspect to them, the Wonder Twins. And I genuinely cannot think of a more hilarious and exciting addition from the Hanna-Barbera family of franchises than them. They transform into literally anything, and they need each other at all times to be able to reliably use their powers. In the show, they use their power for all kinds of crazy situations, and almost always in the oddest way. Need a beaker filled with water? Easy. One turns into a beaker, the other into water. They can transform into items, liquids, characters, and just about anything else. The possibilities are absolutely limitless, so I had to get them into this poll. Alright, and with the five shows of this week's poll discussed, now it's time to discuss the results of last week's poll. Last week I asked you all what Adult Swim show you thought was most likely to make it into multiverses. I expected the vote to be pretty close, but to be honest I didn't expect Aqua Teen Hunger Force to win it. In either case, here we are. It seems like there's a large portion of you guys that think it should be Master Shake or Frylock, but I didn't get much of an impression on whether it should be one or the other, so for now I'll just go with Frylock because I still think he's the one most applicable, but I can be 
nice way. So just let me know why you think Master Shake should have this spot down in the comments. So with that, let's go ahead and get to this week's poll. Which Hanna-Barbera cartoon do you think is most likely to be represented in multiverses? Space Ghost, Birdman, The Jetsons, Captain Planet, or The Wonder Twins from Super Friends? You can take part in the poll in one of two places. You can either go to the community page on this YouTube channel. The poll will be located on the most recent post there, but you can also go to a custom poll that I made on a website called Straw Poll. You can find the link to this poll in the description of this video and pinned to the top of the comment section. All right, that's it, everyone. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Make sure to like and subscribe and all that stuff. Until next time.